Hey guys, this is Keith Wallen from Breaking Benjamin. You're listening to Chuck Shoot Podcast. Welcome to the show, and thanks for checking us out. We have Keith Wallen of Breaking Benjamin coming up, but before we get to that, uh, just a couple announcements about the show. First of all, I've got a lot of uh, exciting guests already lined up, and I, as I look to the future, I'm planning to schedule more and more of a variety of guests. So I've uh, always planned on doing lots of different kinds of guests and not just music guests. Uh, but other interesting people, including people in the movie and TV world, sports people, authors, and other experts. And I'd love to hear from you. Like, who would you like to see on the show? Like, hit me up on social media and let me know. Um, so besides the guests, the other thing I've been slacking on is posting more of the short clips. My goal would be to try to have at least one preview clip of each interview, although I don't know if that's realistic, um, but do you like the clips? Maybe you don't want to watch a full interview of every guest, but you'll watch a two minute YouTube clip if you're mildly interested in the guest or the topic. So hit me up and let me know what you think about that idea. Okay. That's enough of me blabbing. You didn't come here to listen to me talk. You came here to listen to Keith Wallen. He's the guitarist for Breaking Benjamin since 2014. Uh, before that he was in uh, all the leaders, Adelita's way and uh, which was also a very successful band and he's also done some solo work and that's why he's here to he's currently promoting his new solo record that's coming out it's called this world or the next the new single is out right now on spotify it's called dream away it's a really good song so we're going to get into all that in the interview check it out welcome keith wallen to the chuck shoot podcast how are you doing today i'm doing well how are you great i heard you uh had a birthday was that yesterday it was uh, or two days Wednesday. ago, Wednesday. Okay, so happy belated birthday! Thank you. Did Thank you do you. anything fun for that? Uh, not really. I mean, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to really go all out in uh, COVID times. But uh, I went, uh, I went and got a pizza. So uh, that was that was my celebration. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> yeah. Is there oh, good yeah. pizza down in uh, you're in Knoxville, right? So I'm a little bit east of Knoxville, but okay. I just went to I just went to Domino's. You know, nothing too fancy. Really? But, uh, That's yeah. where the rock stars go to Domino's. I thought you'd have some sort of cool hip pizza place. Or... Nah, nah, not really. Okay. Well, so tell me about um, where you grew up, though. In in West Virginia, you said it was like really beautiful, like waterfalls and whitewater rafting and camping and all that stuff. Tell me about that. Daniels, I think it was the town. Yeah, it's. Uh... Yeah, I, I grew up in a, a small little uh, uh, outskirt of Beckley called Daniels, um, which is beside another outskirt uh, known as Shady Spring. That's where mm -hmm. I went to school. And um, yeah, it's beautiful, man. It's, um, you know, uh, it's known for its its mountains. And uh, I know, you know, growing up and, um, you know, I really try to take advantage of that, get out in nature and camp. And uh, my older brothers, they were really uh, they were really into um whitewater rafting they were guides and they would they would kind of do it uh during the summer and uh so i went i went down the river a bunch of times with them and um it was great it was great it's uh it really is it's like a roller coaster but uh a natural roller coaster so it was, it was cool yeah i did one of those in durango but then everyone made fun of me and said oh that's a weak one you did like isn't there certain uh like levels or something what are these like high level ones like a 10 or not i don't I remember the rating system but i just remember the ones in West yeah. Virginia are pretty intense. Yeah, they can be. Uh, so I've I've gone down two rivers. Uh, the New River is one of them, and another one is called the Golly River. And uh, really, the highest the classification can go is a Class Five. Uh, for the oh, that's what. It, yeah. Okay. Rapid. Yeah. And uh, so the Golly River, they open that up um, every uh, every fall, uh, where they basically just kind of release a, a bunch of water uh, from a dam. And it creates hmm. this just super, uh, you know, crazy, awesome river that uh, people go white rider rafting and kayaking on. So, so oh. I did that one summer or one uh, one fall, and uh, yeah, that was probably the most uh, dangerous stuff I've been on. There's a bunch of class fives, and uh, you know, it's no it's no joke for sure. Uh, there's there's injuries and everything every year from it, but oh. uh, but I made it through, and uh, yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, definitely a, a, a fun memory that's cool so but with music so this is i found this interesting that you're it was actually your music teacher in elementary 
uh, uh, told told you that you should be you should be singing in this Christmas show and like maybe you hadn't really thought about it at that point but um, does that teacher know the effect of like what like how you turned out that now you're in this big uh, rock band? Um, I don't know. Um, I don't think she's uh, still living, but uh, so maybe she does know actually. So, uh, but she, she yeah she was she was very supportive. Uh, there at uh you know the the ripe old age of five years old or whatever it was <laughs> oh that's know, really like, young okay yeah i mean uh you know it, i think people just you know they, they kind of get the kids going and they start singing and maybe she's walking around and kind of hearing some are a little little bit more in key than the others you know i definitely wasn't great by any means i'm sure but uh you know, I think it's any excuse to kind of uh, dress these little kids up as a Christmas tree and throw them yeah. on stage, and get a little show going. So yeah, and obviously most people that are in those kinds of things don't turn out to be in big rock bands. And you didn't get into rock <laughs> until later. It was like your neighbor or something that got you into Metallica. So tell me about that. Like, you know, hearing the Black album for the first time that kind of inspired you to play guitar. Yeah, my uh, my one of my just my best friend growing up. Um, I used to go over to his house and, um, uh, you know, we'd hang out, we'd play video games and, you know, do what kids do. And, um, one day I went over there and he was, you know, messing around on an acoustic guitar. And I was like, wow, that's super cool. Like, you know, is it hard? How do you, how do you do it? And, uh, and, you know, he kind of showed me a few chords and eventually I got my own acoustic guitar and, you know, I'd go over there and we'd jam and, you know, play all kinds of stuff, you know, whatever it was, you know, Led Zeppelin or, whatever kind of song we were kind of trying to learn and pick up that was, you know, coming out on guitar war world or something, you know? So, and Metallica was one of those bands where, uh, it was just, it was super awesome. And, you know, uh, I could, I could play some of the riffs, not all of them, mm -hmm. uh, but just a few little, you know, little things here and there. And, uh, it was enough to kind of, you know, kind of push me forward a little bit. And, um, and then my brother, um, my brother got me the Black Album tape for Christmas oh. uh, one year, and I just, I wore it out, uh, and you know, sat there and tried to learn all those songs. That's too. a great so album. It is. It was great. And then I, you know, then I went back and got all the other albums. I had, I, I, it was like my prized possession by my by my bed on my nightstand. I had all the like metallic albums and the tapes just like, you know, stacked up there, and I was just like, oh yeah. Got so which. Count. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I think the first five are the best. And then, I mean, I guess you'd say six, if you count like garage days, what is, do you have, do you have a favorite of those of all or all of the Metallica, which one's your favorite? Yeah, that's tough. Uh, you know, and this is a, uh, you know, a much disputed, uh, <laughs> right. Topic. You know, it's hard to say, you know, every, everyone is, you know, uh, argued over, but, um, I, I, I'm a big fan of, of, of great songs uh and and you know um so the the songs that really stuck out to me that that i felt like were pretty pretty darn good was the black album but with that being said it, i'm torn between the black album and master of puppets because <sighs> it's both master so good. Of puppets yeah. is, is just you know it's it's it's, it's a, a masterpiece up. it is it really mm. is but uh yeah black album though i felt like they they really took the time they kind of had a, a fresh producer come in uh, kind of, you know, open them up to new ideas creatively. And, and, um, so I, I was into it. Um, and yeah. I, you know, and I liked, I liked some of the older stuff too. I was, I was into load and reload and all that stuff. I, I, uh, I wasn't, wasn't a hater per se, you know, it was definitely different. You yeah. Know? And it, was, it was a little, it, was, it took a little bit of getting used to, but, um, you know, I, I, I tried to find the positives of it and, and, um, you know, yeah. So were you into, I know that you're into like eighties pop. You're in like your Phil Collins fan. Was that before Metallica or after Metallica? I'd say that was probably after. Interesting. Probably okay. After. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh no. I was just going to say, you know, I growing up in the eighties, uh, you know, my, my, um, my brother, my old, one of my older brothers, he'd be getting up to go to high school. And uh, one of the ways to wake him up would we just turn his stereo on to mm. the radio station and it would play all these, you know, 80s songs at the time. You know, nice. These, I say 80s now, but at the time it's like new music. Yeah, right. But, uh, you know, and it was all these things and I would just kind of sit there and I'd like listen to these songs. I was like, oh, that's cool. And, and then I kind of forgot about it. 
and then just later on whenever i really started getting back into music you know i would hear i would hear some of these 80s songs i was like oh man that's you know i used to hear that in the mornings you know when my brother was waking up right. and, uh, you know thompson twins you know genesis you know all kinds of stuff and uh so i was just i loved it so i kind of re rediscovered it but no that's really that yeah. not that i don't still love the rock of course yeah of course no and then this is interesting too so your dad was into me he, he made an album he was a crooner he was into like frank sinatra is this can i listen to this album is it on spotify or how do i find this yeah no, it is. It is. Uh, I don't think it's anywhere. Oh. It's uh, pretty much on my computer. And, and I think we have a, a few CDs laying around. But uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what happened with that. You know, I think, um, you know, he was living in New York City at the time and and had a little opportunity to uh, record a, a few songs. And he, he kind of, you know, released it. I think it was on Dateline Records, whatever that is, way back <laughs> in the day. OK. And, um, and then eventually he. Um, you know, met my mom and my mom was in entertainment as well. She was in a, a kind of a traveling, uh, kind of a dance kind of thing that they, they used to go overseas and do, uh, do like these big Broadway kind of dancing routine things. And anyway, huh. so they met at a, they met at a, at a, at a show. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Which was kind of funny. Um, but, That's cool. Uh, yeah. So they were really supportive of you going into music as long as you went to college. So you went to the University yeah. of Tennessee. What did you um, study there? I know you were kind of doing your band stuff while you were there, but did you have a major? Did you finish? I did. Yeah, I uh, I got a degree in English. Uh, basically, I'm just horrible at math. <laughs> so I'm like, what's the opposite of math? OK, work. <laughs> let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah. What is that joke? It's like for the comedians, like. He says, like, uh, yeah, I majored in English. I didn't tell him I already knew how to speak it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was it was something, you know, it was it was it was difficult. I, I mean, I'm super thankful that my my parents were supportive and uh, and I'm glad I'm glad that uh, I went to school and and got that. You know, it's uh, it's something I'm proud of. But, you know, really, I, I, I don't use it. I don't think maybe I use it a little bit with, you know, I've had a few poetry classes and stuff in there, but, uh, maybe that helps somewhat. Um, you don't think that helped with your songwriting and song structure and things like that? I mean, yeah, it has to, I mean, I, I, I guess I just don't think about it. it. It probably does help more than I think. Uh, like knowing I mean, the words and such and getting, I would assume it build your vocabulary and such. Sure. Yeah, sure. Definitely. I definitely had to do a lot of reading, a lot of writing papers, um, you know, um, and I had some really great teachers. I had a, a great poetry teacher that was super supportive of my musical aspirations and dreams. And even after I uh, graduated, she had me come back and kind of do like a little songwriting thing oh, for, that's really for one cool. of her classes, which was really cool. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah, so you're in this band Copper and you're the lead singer. And I find this fascinating. You were in this band for like eight years and you guys played yeah. mostly regionally but you did do some showcases. Um, were you doing other, you must've been having to do other things to pay the bills. Did you do music related things like guitar lessons or are you just doing totally different kinds of work or what were you doing to kind of make ends meet during that time? Yeah. All kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, painting, you know, I, I, I used to, uh, you know, clean my brother's office, you know, uh, random things, you know, painting porches, anything and everything, uh, to get by. Uh, but, um, yeah, wow. it was a, it was, it was a, it was a fun eight years, you know, learned a lot, you know, got out there, we played a bunch of shows, a bunch of showcases over the years and, um, you know, never could, never could quite make it over the hump there. So, yeah. So how did you continue on that long and not quit? Cause eight time or sorry, eight years is a long time to stick with it. Was there glimpses of like fame and you must've had some big shows or, or like you said, the showcases, was that like, was the taste enough to keep, keep you going or did you ever feel like giving up? Yeah. It's kind of like, it's kind of like golf. It's like for every, for every 20 horrible shots, there's that one shot that just like keeps you going uh, and coming back. Huh. Uh, you know, we, we, we did, we played a, a few, um, you know, really cool shows. Um, you know, we had a, a couple songs, um, that were, you know, that were able to get on the radio, uh, some really amazing radio stations and, and DJs took some chances on us and put our, put our songs up a few times. So, you know, there was a little, there was just enough hope to kind of, kind of keep us going along. Um, 
and you know, it was, it was my dream. It was one of those things you just, I just didn't want to give up. And, uh, and, and I didn't, and, uh, you know, I, I joke around about it. I was like, maybe I was just, maybe I was just too stupid. <laughs> if I was smart, maybe I would have, I would have quit, uh, and, you know, gotten a real job somewhere. Well, so, but yeah, eventually you did quit. I mean, after eight years, which is a long time. And like you said, you learned a lot. So how did you know after eight years that, okay, it's time to move on from this band, at least maybe try a different band, or did you have a plan as to what you were going to do? I mean, obviously you got recruited for this other band that we'll get to, but at that time before you got recruited for the other thing, did you have an idea what you were going to do after quitting copper? Yeah, I really had no idea. I know I wanted to, uh, you know, yeah, I know. I wish, I wish I, uh, I wish I'd, uh, you know, had a better plan, but I didn't, you know, mm. I kind of had an idea of what I wanted to do, but no real set, you know, plan. Um, I just know that it was, it was kind of time for a change. I felt like we had kind of reached our peak mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we had gone through, uh, so just a, a bunch of member changes over the years. I mean, we, we must've had five drummers, six drummers over that time. Wow. And, and it was just, uh, you know, it was like spinal tap. It was just like trying to, <laughs> trying to keep up and trying to, you know, but, but yeah, it was, um, it was, it was tough. And, and I, I realized that I don't think we're going to do it. I don't think, you know, there's, there's too much flux. There's not enough things happening. You know, we've, we've played, all the showcases, nothing's happened, you know, so it's time to, to pivot and, and do something else. And really I wanted to try and, and just um, go to Nashville and, and try to just like work on my songwriting and, and hopefully get into, uh, you know, some kind of thing with that over there. But so you know, how, again. yeah. So how long was it from the time you quit copper to where I think it was this guy from Atlantic records, Greg Johnson, he had liked you in that band copper and he reaches out to you and says, Hey, we got this position open in, uh, Adelita's way. It's a guitar player. Like how long was that gap? Uh, I would say it was probably, I don't know, three, four months, wow. something like that, you know? Yeah. It's so amazing in that timing. time I was in that time, I was basically just, uh, sitting in my apartment trying to write songs and, you know, try to stay positive and, but it was tough. I was super depressed. Really? Super depressed. Oh my gosh. I mean, yeah. Cause you know, it's, it's, it's really, you're like, well, I'm, I'm giving up on my dream. You know, I'm, I'm still, still trying to do music, but you know, I'm in that just, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's tough. It's tough, it's tough mm -hmm. to get to the next level. And, and I was questioning everything. I was questioning, you know, well, why did I do this for so long? You know, here I am almost 30 years old at the time. You know, I felt like a, a loser. I, I felt like, uh, wow. I just was... so, but you know, I just, uh, again, I, I was, I was not smart enough to, <laughs> to, to, uh, <laughs> realize that. And I just kept going and, and, you know, look, I, I, I've, I've made some, uh, super, uh, super great friends and, and have developed some great friendships with, uh, you know, various musicians and, 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 you know, my, my former band, you know, my, uh, uh, you know, still, it's just like best friends, uh, with, with, you know, the bass player from the band, especially because we really, we really just wrote it out and really mm -hmm. just, you know, gave it our all for so long. And, and so it's kind of a brotherhood there, but mm -hmm. yeah, Greg, uh, he, he was, um, uh, at Atlantic at the time. And, and, um, it was one of those things where we had, we had had a, a uh, kind of a development deal with Atlantic mm. and he was always, he's, he'd always been a fan of ours and, and, and a fan of me and a, and a really awesome guy and great friend. And so when I was, when I was not in the band anymore, I really was just like, you know, what should I do? And he, he was kind of, he was kind of, uh, you know, acting as, as my manager a little bit, which was, which I was super grateful for. He okay. really was kind of helping me a little bit and figuring out the next direction and, uh, you know, obviously he couldn't be a full-time manager. I wanted him, to, wanted him to be, but you know, he had, you know, his other stuff that sure. he, he had, but, um, yeah, he hit me up with that opportunity and it's amazing. Uh, yeah, it, it was, uh, it was cool. And, and I knew that I knew their A&R guy, uh, was, uh, Kim Stevens, who, who was at Capitol at the time. And, and I had done some writing for a Capitol, uh, band uh saving able at the time so i knew kim through that oh. and through skid mills their producer 
and Kim uh, hit me up and he kind of was saying the same thing. He was just kind of like, you know, hey, there's this band, you know, they need a rhythm guitarist, backup vocalist. Would you want to do that? And and, um, and I was like, yeah, I don't know. So I had to think about it a little bit. And, really? But Greg really was the one who was kind of really kind of orchestrating it and, and setting up the stuff. And, you know, I was able to speak to their manager and, and, you know, eventually I was just like, why not? Let's try it. You know, not doing anything else at the moment. <laughs> My time is, is freed up. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And, and so, you know, they were, they were signed, you know, they were a signed band and, right. and I was like, you know, here I am. I've, I've spent so long trying to get this band signed and here's an opportunity to at least even perform in a signed band. And I'd like to at least see how it is, even if yeah. it's doesn't work out or whatever, you know? So, so, I mean, it was like, amazing. You guys, uh, you did shows with guns and roses and Deftones. I mean, you had a number one rock radio song, but then after five years of all that success, you, um, you said it was just getting, this is interesting. Cause like, I think a lot of people think that you left that band to join breaking Benjamin, but you actually quit before that. And you just said it was just getting monotonous and just feeling stagnant and that's kind of a ballsy move to quit though before you had had another job lined up like were you planning on just going totally solo at that time i mean really what it boils down to is i was unhappy you know i was really unhappy i i I didn't feel like uh i was getting to where i wanted to be with my career um you know i those guys are great they're they're super talented they're they're still out out there doing their thing um, you know, nothing but support for those guys. They were great. Um, but you know, for me, I just kind of felt like, uh, I just had to do something different. I wanted to try something different. I wanted to, I guess, find my own voice, I guess. Um, and so I, I started working on solo stuff and, um, you know, I was living at, in LA at the time. And, uh, you know, again, it was like one of those things where I, you know, I had to get a job and, you know, uh, try to make ends meet, but still, you know, working on music and, and, and working on, uh, whatever I can do to, uh, uh, you know, be able to quit my job and just focus on music. But, uh, yeah, so a little bit of time went by, uh, I kind of wrote this, you know, um, big long thank you, uh, post on Facebook when I, when I was leaving that band and, and, uh, and Ben must have saw he saw it and, and hit me up and was just like, hey, man, let's, uh, you know, let's let's talk on the phone, you know. So so I did. And uh, he was like, you know, send me some videos of you playing and singing some of these songs. And and so I made my little video and sent it off. And he got it. He was just like, sounds great, man. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know what's what's happening. And, uh, and we had talked a little bit on the phone also before that. And, and you know, I was telling him about my my solo stuff I was working on and you know, I was trying to, to see what, uh, you know, what was going to happen with that. And, um, you know, I think at first he may have thought that I wasn't interested, you know, Hmm. because I was, I was kind of telling him about my solo stuff, but which is not the case. I mean, I was, I was thrilled that, uh, you know, there was a possibility of, of, of playing in that band. So, uh, but you know, again, also it's like, you want to try and play it cool a little bit. You know, you know, <laughs> yeah. Know, well, I, and wasn't there like a gap? Like he called, he reached out to you and you was, sent him yeah. some stuff and then like, you didn't hear from him. So like for like months. And so you're like, Oh, I guess I didn't get the gig. And then like, I yeah. think it was the other guitar player reached out and said, Hey, you in, are you joining? And you're like, wait, I, I haven't heard from him. Like, yeah, 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 there was, there, you know, and that during that time, I just, you know, I was like, well, you know, I guess I didn't get it. Whatever life goes on. I'm going to work on my stuff. And, yeah you know, continue to work. And, uh, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. Jason hit me up and was just like, yo, is let's, uh, you know, you, you into this. And, and I was like, hell yeah, I'm into this. Let's do it. And I was like, I told Ben I was into this, but you know. Yeah. So then you guys record that first album that you did with them, uh, Dawn be- or Dark Before Dawn, excuse me, that debuted at number one on the billboard top 200. Now I know that's not as a big of a deal now, but I mean, I'm sure that translates to album sales and streaming and stuff. So you must've felt pretty vindicated at that point to have a number one album in the country or the world or whatever it is after eight years of kind of struggling with copper, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was, uh, it was thrilling, you know, um, you know, obviously it's hard to sit there and pat myself on the back and take credit for all kinds of stuff when you know i've been in the band five minutes sure (laughs) sure but you're part of it yeah yeah i mean it i was it was i was thrilled i mean it was it was really great and and you know and the fans have been 
uh, you know, since since then, I mean, up until today, they've been absolutely uh, supportive and welcoming of, of, of us new guys. Uh, but yeah, it, it was uh, it was cool. It was uh, I didn't even know what to think. I was just like, is this real? <laughs> is this really happening? Uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was definitely exciting, man. Yeah. And you get to write with obviously with Breaking Benjamin, but you've also uh, helped write uh, with other people like uh, from Fuel and Saving Able and stuff. So is it more fun to write for other people? Because is that is that kind of more relaxing in a way? Like I know, you know, have, hosting the podcast is sometimes stressful, but like being a guest on someone else's, I'm like, hey, this is this is all your job. I just sit back and relax. Yeah. Like, is it more natural to just like you could just write and not have to worry about it? Uh, I wouldn't say that. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I mean, look, I I I just love songwriting i love to write songs it's it's a it's a it's a different avenue of uh, of this business uh mm-hmm. that i find very enjoyable um but it's a challenge it's it's uh you know I, it's really i really don't prefer one or one to the other as far as uh writing for my projects personally or you know writing uh you know co-writes with with other people's projects you know it's it's just fun it's all fun to me so um and um so I love it. You know, when you say challenge uh, for songwriting, like what, what is the challenge with that? Is it hard to write? I mean, I've heard, I, I don't know cause I don't write songs, but I've heard it's harder to write a song if you're in a good mood and to write about happy, like you almost want to pick up the guitar when you're struggling more and feeling pain. Is that true? I mean, yeah, yes and no. I, I you, you know, it's I, to answer your first question. Uh, yes. It's <laughs> okay. all hard. Yeah. It's all hard. Uh, whether I'm happy, sad, mad, whatever, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to write a song. I mean, uh, one that's, you know, a good song anyway. Uh, it's easy to write a shitty song. <laughs> it's really, <laughs> really, really okay. yeah, I write those in my sleep. Okay. Uh, so it doesn't but, just, cause you know, like when you hear like Paul McCartney talk about, it, he's like, Oh, I just picked up the guitar and it just came to me. I'm like, what? It just like comes to you. Like, and he writes this like brilliant, you know, song. So yeah. that's, it's not, it doesn't come as easy to you is what you're saying. Yeah, I'm definitely not Paul McCartney. Uh, yeah, he, uh, he's. I think he's a uh, in a league of his own. Uh, you, I will say this though: there are some times where uh, it's easier than others, and 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 there's no, there's really no, um, you know, identifying factor that that mm-hmm. goes into that. I, I think, uh, you know, sometimes you just get a little moment of inspiration, and you just grab on, and you just, you know, you just follow it. Okay. Uh, and then sometimes, you know, you can follow it all the way to the end of the rope and then your song's done and you're like, oh, shoot. OK, well, that didn't take too long. There's other times where I'll sit and I'll agonize over one word and I'm just like, I got to get this. You know, I'm looking for this right word or huh. this line or this pre-chorus or this section or uh, but, uh, you know. Do you do it's like great. a, do you have a rhyming dictionary? I think that was something the Gin Blossom singer had said that he uses yeah, that, uh, those definitely help. There's, you know, rhyme zone on, you know, on, on the internet, you know, hmm. um, and then, you know, people will ask me if, if, if I write about, you know, myself, my own experiences, does, does it, you know, is it easier to write when it's more autobiographical? And, and the answer is no. I mean, sometimes I do, sometimes it's about, you know, things that I'm, I'm experiencing or have experienced or, or even just like movies. It, movies that I watch, I'll watch something. And I'm just like, wow, oh, that's so cool. That's, you know, the visual aspect of things are, are super inspiring to me sometimes, but um, other times you just kind of make stuff up, make up a story, a mm. scenario, a character and, and uh, you know, so, and it's fun. Yeah. Fun so when you write these songs for your solo, do you have to like run the songs through breaking Benjamin and make sure they don't want any of them? Or is it like, you can do whatever it's your solo thing. You can do whatever you want. It's pretty much the latter. Um, you know, none of these songs are, are, are the right fit. You know, I, I feel, mm. uh, you know, that's a good question though. I've never been asked that. I always I wonder, like- see if it was my band, if I was breaking Ben, if I was a singer bringing Benjamin, I would be like, I want to hear everything first. Cause if I, if I, there's a song I really like, I want it for breaking Benjamin. Like, right. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I pretty much just make the call on that. You know, I feel like I've got a pretty good judge of, of something that, that, that would be more uh, breaking Benjamin ish. And more oh, okay. That, that, yeah. This, cause uh, this definitely does sound, it's a, it's a departure, I think. And I like it. I really like it. And I, 
And you Thank said, you. yeah, you said that these songs, it sound people like think that it was written during the pandemic uh, because the songs are about mental struggle and isolation, but it actually was written in 2019 and you held on to them because you didn't want to release it in 2020. And you're like, 2020 is a terrible year. I'm going to wait until 2021. Yeah. You, you've got, you've got all my answers, man. That's it. <laughs> That's it. You did your research. Yeah. But no, so getting back on the mental struggle and the isolation part, like going back to what you said earlier, sometimes it's like, you know, it could be hypothetical. Is it, is that one hypothetical? Is it about, you know, things that you're seeing in the world or friends that you have or your own personal experiences or. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we all, you know, sometimes we we go to those dark places in our mind and, uh, you know, we just can't break out of it. You know, we just, we need some sort of escape, some kind of positivity, whatever it is, even if it's just the idea of escape or the idea of, of, of something is, is, you know, there's, it's not all lost, you know, uh, I don't know, just keeping that idea alive of something positive to reach for, uh, even if it hasn't happened yet. Uh, but, uh, and just to, you know, follow your dreams, even if it's, even if it's just getting out of that negative mindset, you know, mm -hmm. it's just, uh, I don't know. Get that's yeah. It. So that's, is that, that's more the song dream away or is, or are you saying that's kind of the theme of the whole album? That's probably more dream away. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, the album there's, it's all over the place. Um, um, yeah, it's funny. It's one of those, it, 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 you know, when people are kind of describing what, what a song is about, what certain themes and what, you know, things are about. It's like, there's, there's two different ways of explaining that you can sit there and really explain and do the deep dive of what you were thinking and why you did it and what you said. And then there is also, uh, you know, then this is something that Ben does and, and it's, and it's genius to me. And, and I almost want to start following it because you basically just say the song is about whatever you want it to be about. And that way, you're not just ruining it. You're not ruining it for someone's expectations. You know, if you, you say something that's not what the person was thinking and mm. I don't know, I, it's, it's kind of, I kind of like leaving the, uh, the ambiguous, uh, you know, nature of it. So. Yeah, for yeah. sure. The album's all it's, it's, it's all over the place with all kinds of different stuff. There's, there's dealings with death. There's dealings with, with love. There's dealings with, uh, you know, anger, resentment, all kinds of things. Uh, but, uh, and also just, you know, hope, hope in, in the future. Um, yeah. Cause I mean, it's been a tough year and it's like, yeah. we, we need, we need a little bit of hope in the future. For sure. Did, now, so did you co-write with anyone else on this album or is it all just you? So I did. Yeah. There's a few songs, uh, including dream away, uh, was a co-write with, uh, my producer, uh, Joe Rickard. Uh, and, um, yeah, he, he also co-wrote a few other songs with me in there. And then there was another song co-written by, uh, another producer named, uh, Colin Britton, uh, who's done a lot of great stuff with, with Papa Roach and various artists. Uh, yeah. I've known him for a long time, uh, back in, back in Tennessee. So, um, yeah, that's it, man. Yeah. And the other ones, uh, so other ones are just mine that I've, a few of them I've had for years. One of them I've had for about six, seven years on my computer. Wow. And, okay. and I just wasn't, I just wanted it to be the, the, the right time and the right thing to say whenever I finally put it out. And then are you going to release these? Like, it seems like the thing to do now is like release a single, then in a month or two, release another single, or are you going to release like the rest of the album at some point just all at once? Yes. To all of that. Okay. Uh, you know, we'll probably, probably do another single, probably another single. And then, um, you know, then the album out after that, you know, it's, it's kind of like the new format of, of things that people are doing. And, uh, yeah, you know, I, I want to play the game the right yeah. way. So. <laughs> that's smart. Yeah, that's smart. So you said that the people, the Br breaking Benjamin fans were really supportive of you joining, um, are they, are people supportive of your solo career? And like, how do you deal with the trolls and the critics, like, do you try to find constructive things from their comments or their reviews, or do you just try to ignore the negativity as much as you can? Yeah, I try to ignore it. Uh, you know, there's not too much of it. You know, I, I'm I, on one side, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see it sometimes. Uh, you know, I mean, look, I'm, you're never happy to see anybody say anything bad about you or your music, but it, it does tell me that I'm getting out there more and, and I'm doing something right because all the biggest bands, all the best bands in the world have haters, no matter how you slice it. That's true. Uh, 
Um, so I'm just like, okay, that's, you know, I, that's me just trying to take the positive twist out of it, I guess. Uh, but, uh, yeah, cause there's no probably part, a lot of positive comments too, though. So it's like, oh yeah. yeah. I mean the, the, the positive comments and the positivity that I've seen far outweighs, uh, what negative things I've said or I've seen, um, you know, and you just got to take it all, you take, take it all in a grain of salt and, and, and not to not believe too much of it, of the hype or, or, or any of the negative stuff either, you know? Um, mm. yeah. So that's good advice. Yeah, for sure. So, um, I heard you, I, I was listening to your interview with, uh, on doc coils podcast mm -hmm. and, uh, you did like this impre impression or impersonation of George Bush. Can I have a taste of that? Right. It was like oh so good. God. Oh my God. Uh, God, put me on the spot. dude. <laughs> it was so good. I couldn't believe that you could, you could do that like that. I couldn't see it. I just heard it, but honestly, you know what? My, my imitation is a crappy imitation of Will Ferrell. <laughs> it was pretty good. I thought so I, I learned it all from watching him. Yeah. And his, and he would, and doc was doing Obama. You guys were, you guys were hilarious. Now his sounds um, perfect. I mean, he, you know, especially on his podcast, because you know, you, you you're not you're not looking at him. So yeah, you just yeah, yeah, yeah. Just picture Obama in your head. Yeah, no, that's that's good. And then um, my my last crazy question here, you I heard you talk about uh, that you'd be curious about aliens in Area Fifty One. Like, what is do you do you believe in aliens? Like, what are your thoughts on that subject? Have I you mean, researched there's it? Gotta be, there's got to be something out there. There's got to be something out there. Look, I'm a huge Star Trek fan, Star Are Wars, you? all the sci-fi. I love it. And, uh, you know, there's, I mean, how many stars are up there? You look up there and that's a potential solar system with planets. You know, there's got to be something. It makes you, know? you wonder. Yeah, right. But then, like, I was listening to Elon Musk and he's like, no, I don't, I don't think there is alien. And it's like, well, that guy's really smart and he's smarter than me. And he's saying, he doesn't think yeah. he said, if there is aliens, like they're really, they're hiding, they're hiding very well. So. Totally. Know. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Uh, I Crazy. hope he's right. I hope he's right. You know, cause if he's wrong uh, and they are hiding, they probably more advanced than us and they'd probably just show up and zap all of us. So. <laughs> Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's, there's, there's so many stories of like things that flew by and people didn't know what it was. Maybe it wasn't aliens. Maybe it was government stuff, but it's an interesting yeah. topic, right? For sure. Yeah. For sure. Sorry. Uh, totally off the top of, of music, oh, no. but I did no, hear I you uh, answer that in, in another interview. So no, I love it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's gotta be something out there. Um, do you research that kind of stuff a lot or what do you do besides music? What do you do for fun? So I love movies. I love watching movies, um, shows, all that. Although um, I will say uh, over this year, I feel like I've, I've watched every show. I've, I, I joke around that I've finished Netflix because uh, you know, they're, they're, <laughs> you've they're, reached they're, the end. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's just like previously watched and it's just like Netflix. Uh, so I You got to get uh, the other ones, Hulu and uh, Amazon prime. And there's, Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I did. I did that too. There's HBO max. All yep. of it. I've gone through the, the gambit. Of, What's some uh, of the best stuff you've seen recently? I'm always looking for stuff to watch. That's under the radar. Okay. Um, I'm a big Ridley Scott fan. He had oh, a show yeah. on HBO max raised by wolves. That was pretty interesting. Oh, I haven't, I haven't heard of that. I love Ridley Scott though. Oh dude. It's great. It's great. It's super sci-fi. So, oh, okay worn <laughs> okay no i like sci-fi i like i like all genres i mean i mostly i like a lot of comedies but also like dramas and sci-fi and horror i like horror too oh nice nice yeah big big uh big christopher nolan fan you oh, know yeah of course he puts out is just great although i did see tenant and i had to watch it about <laughs> three times before i knew what the hell was happening because yeah i didn't get all, it either it's he's too smart so for me much. sometimes yeah, it, it was a lot. I was just like, my head hurts. Actually, <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know what's happening. Are you a Tarantino fan? I love Tarantino. Oh, me too. Yeah. I think he's the best. God, yeah, my I dream. Actually, went... Oh no, go ahead. I was just gonna say, my dream would be to like to have like a movie night with like Tarantino, Kevin Smith, and uh, Rob Zombie. Wouldn't that be amazing? That would be amazing. Just to hear their like you know takes on different films and stuff. I think it'd be so fun. Yeah. Maybe throw Scorsese in there. Too. Oh yeah. If, 
if he's not busy, sure, why not? Yeah, I yeah, loved yeah, it. Yeah. I love Scorsese. Oh, he's the he's the yeah. best. Yeah, he's good, dude. I actually had like a um, I did I had like a, a, a Tarantino uh, just like watch fest like a couple weeks ago, and where I just like watched watched a bunch of them. Like I'd never seen Reservoir Dogs. Oh really? Um, oh, that's a great yeah, one. I, like I'd kind of seen it in passing. You know, but I was like, I need to just sit down and really watch this because I'm, you know, I love. All yeah. This stuff. Did you watch True Romance? Because that's technically, you know, he only co or he wrote the script, but that's a great movie, too. Right. I've seen that one once. It's been a while. That's a good one. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, but I got to I got to go back, though, to Pulp Fiction. That's that's my favorite. I mean, oh, yeah. I know it's the obvious choice, but right. I mean, it's just, it's a masterpiece. And yeah, from the beginning to the end, you can't take your eyes off. No, for that's what got me hooked on. I remember just watching that like on a it was like a pay per view on a hotel when I was a kid with my brother. I was like, yeah, I worked at a video store and the guy told me this movie was good. And so I was always trying to watch it. And uh, we saw it on pay per view. And my brother's like, what? And it was a point the part where the girl is, uh, you know, she's OD and they're putting the needle in her chest. My brother's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> I was like, it's Pulp Fiction. I don't know. It's I loved yeah. it, though. It's great. Cool. Oh, yeah. Well, awesome. Well, I thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. Um, I do like to end with a charity. I think your um, manager said you, you wanted to represent St. Jude's Children's Hospital, or did you have another yeah, one? St. Jude. Yes. Okay. For sure. Great. Well, we'll um, we'll put that in the link. If uh, people can, be, people should definitely check out your social media, your website, and if they can throw a few bucks to St. Jude's, that'd be great. Um, you've accomplished so much. Do you have any plans for the future? Like, I'd love to see a solo show. That'd be fun. Are you going to tour as a solo artist? Yeah, I would like to. Uh, you know, obviously, whenever it's safe uh, to do so, and bands are kind of starting to get back out there, I'll, I'll, I'll try and look into it more. Um, but uh, yeah, that's definitely a, the plan. Uh, schedule permitting with, um, you know, Breaking Benjamin, of course, but it's something I want to continue to do and, and cultivate. But uh, yeah, man, dude. Thank you so much for having me. I, yeah. I, uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, to everybody watching, uh, you know, check out my song, Dream Away. Yes, it's so all good. Social media, all that stuff, and uh, appreciate your support. Okay, thanks so much, Keith. I appreciate it. That was so fun. And uh, despite all his success, Keith is a very down-to-earth and super cool guy. Definitely check out his website and his music on Spotify. Follow him on uh, social media. Follow Breaking Benjamin on social media. You can... Follow me on social media to keep up with what I'm doing and what they're doing. Um, if you could subscribe to the podcast on YouTube, you'll get to keep up with uh, future episodes. And I do plan on doing more of those shorter clips um, to give people some highlights of some of the other episodes and a preview. Uh, maybe you're not a Damon Johnson fan or know who that is, but his story about Sammy Hagar, he told me, was epic. So I hope to get more of those uh, bite-sized clips out there. And if there are guests that you'd like me to interview, let me know. Again, it doesn't have to be music. It could be an expert, an author, a journalist, someone with a story to tell. Thanks again for listening. Enjoy the rest of your day. And remember, shoot for the moon.